Hello friends, in this video I am going to show you how to draw the Mohr circle. So let us first assume a body uh, which is being acted upon by various stresses. So let there be a stress on the x-axis in the x-direction that is sigma x and a stress acting on the y-direction that is sigma y and let there be a shear force acting on the body that is tau. So as we can see that the sigma x is trying to pull the body it's trying to is acting it's acting in a tensile manner so sigma x is uh, greater than zero similarly sigma y is also acting uh, in order to uh, pull the body so it's again greater than zero and in order to uh, know the direction of uh, tau uh, the sign of tau we see that on the positive side on the positive face of the body, there is a face uh, acting face uh, the face uh, facing the positive x direction uh, is being acted upon by the force which is uh, in the direction of positive y axis. So positive for the face uh, into positive for the direction gives us positive into positive that is again a positive. Uh, here again uh, the tau is again greater than zero so if uh, so we can see that the tau is greater than zero uh, if the force would have been acting this way that is pointing towards the negative uh, direction uh, the, uh, the the sign would have been positive for the positive phase into negative for the negative direction that is negative or less than zero so uh, this this face let this face be the x plane. Uh, mm, uh, we will need uh, this plane uh, to in the more 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 circle to determine the positions of the different planes, uh, which are uh, calculated in respect to this uh, to the position of this plane. Uh, so uh, you know, let's see how to draw the more circle. So first of all, we have to draw the axis. Uh, it's a graphical method so we have to draw the axis first so let there be the two axes which is the sigma axis and the tau axis uh, we will mm, plot all the uh, uh, linear or axial stresses on the x-axis and the shear stresses on the y-axis that is the tau axis again uh, let the values of sigma x and sigma y be on the sigma axis so plotting the points sigma x and sigma y uh, again, uh, if this uh, force would have been compressive, that is negative, they would have come on the negative side of the x-axis. So, uh, now we have to plot the value of tau on the tau axis from sigma x. So, the value of sigma, uh, the value of tau, I'm sorry, the value of tau uh, is to be plotted from sigma x in the, tau di uh, in the direction of y-axis. So, this is how it should be. Tau, and again, uh, this uh, has to be uh, drawn from sigma y in the negative direction. So, here it is. Now we have to see, uh, yeah, now we have to join the two extreme points. These are the points, extreme points, we have to join them. Alright, uh, now this is our center, and this is our x plane. As you can see, uh, sigma x is also acting, tau is also acting. As we have seen in the body, in the sigma x is acting on the x plane and tau is acting, positive tau is acting on the x plane. So this is our x plane, uh, and this is our center C. Uh, so now we have to draw the circle with center C and radius Cx. That is this. So this is our center C, and we have to draw the circle. This is a circle. Mm -hmm. So this is our more circle, circle. Uh, and now we have to see, uh, yeah, these points, the extreme points, the, the maximum stress. This is the principal stress that is acting. That is P1, and here the minimum it is P2. So the maximum stress is uh, the extreme point of the circle, which uh, uh, the maximum. Uh, the max coordinate of the x-axis which the 
stress-level cuts is P1 and the minimum is the P2. So these are the maximum stresses and the minimum stresses acting acting along the acting in the principal planes. So these are the principal stresses P1 and P2. Now we have to see <coughs> that uh, we have already located the X plane. Now uh, we have to find two theta one and two theta two. That is the direction of a principal plane from the X plane. Uh, as I told you earlier, that this plane is going to be our reference, the X plane. So we have taken uh, theta clockwise to be positive here. So the theta one uh, is uh, this would be our two theta one. So this is our two theta one, and this is our two theta two. So as we can see, mm, this is our two theta one and two theta two. So why uh, in most circles we get not we don't get theta one or theta two, we get two theta one and two theta two. This is because uh, uh, every plane on the object, uh, the distance, the angle between every plane is double on the more circle. As you can see, sigma x and sigma y were acting perpendicular to each other on the object. But now here they are 180 degree apart. So the angle actually doubles. So what we are measuring here is 2 theta 1 and 2 theta 2. So the th theta 1 will be uh, half of this angle and uh, theta 2 will be half of this angle. Uh, which is actually the distance, uh, the angle between uh, these planes, x and uh, sigma, and the principal planes p1 and p2. So now uh, we can uh, locate the tau max. So the maximum shear stress that would be acting is the maximum point on the y-axis, that is this point. So this point is the maximum uh, uh, shear force uh, that would be acting and the uh, angle is again 2 theta max. Uh, here 2 theta max is uh, negative, would come negative because we have taken clockwise to be positive. So uh, this is going anti-clockwise with respect to x. We have to see everything res with respect to x. So 2 theta 1 is positive, uh, 2 theta tau max is negative, or uh, uh, we, would, we could have taken this angle, the whole angle, uh, in order to be positive. So this is a negative angle. Now we can locate uh, Pn and Pt at any given angle theta. So if we are given any angle theta, uh, and we have to locate the uh, uh, the axial and uh, shear stresses at that uh, plane, uh, which is at angle theta from uh, x plane. Uh, we could have done that by mm, first we have to multiply this angle by two, so we have to get two theta. And uh, suppose this is the plane at p n and p t. Uh, yeah. So first we could have uh, taken we would have taken two theta as the angle. And from 2 theta, we could have, we will uh, draw a line uh, stretching to the, from the center to the extreme uh, point on the circle, to a point on the circle at and 2 theta from x axis. So the coordinates, x and y coordinates will uh, give the pn and pt of this, uh, uh, of this uh, plane at the angle of uh, theta from the x axis uh, or uh, 2 theta from the uh, axis um, in the Mohr circle. So Pn is the axial stress or the uh, x axis value of the x axis and Pt is the value of the uh, y axis uh, or the shear stress acting at that plane. Now uh, what if we come across a situation where we don't have any sigma uh, x and sigma y or uh, where we don't have any tau. So in those cases uh, where we don't have any tau, we don't have to draw this line. That is we only have to draw sigma x, sigma y, take the middle as the center and with radius c and sigma y or c and sigma x or c will be at the center of sigma x and sigma y and draw a circle. So the circle would be a very small one and there would be uh, no uh, sigma x and x line and the uh, x plane would be simply our x axis and in those cases where the tau uh, would be present and no sigma x and sigma y would be present in those cases sigma uh, the tau max uh, the tau given would be the tau max and uh, it would be here 
tau and minus tau would be here and the center would be always the origin so in those cases uh, the circle would pass through tau tau the given tau and the minus of the given tau that is the tau max and the tau minimum and the x plane would be the y axis so uh, thank you for watching